Welcome everyone and thanks for joining us on tonight's webinar about sick leave and the attack on our members' rights. Originally we were supposed to have this webinar uh, about labor rights. We have a webinar every, one, every uh, month on the second Wednesday of each month and this one was scheduled to be about labor history. But because of everything that's been going on with sick leave and uh, you know, especially after the federal budget was tabled uh, and the inquiries that we were getting from members, we decided to shift our focus um, and, and, and give members the opportunity to ask questions and, and discuss, this, discuss this really important issue. And, you know, even since we shifted the focus, uh, they came up with the Budget Implementation Act. Um, so there's even more to discuss. So tonight's webinar is about the attack on our rights and sick leave, and we'll postpone the labor rights webinar for another day. So uh, tonight joining us is uh, PSCC National President Robin Benson and uh, Prairie's Regional Executive Vice President Marianne Fladoon. They'll discuss what's going on, what the latest, sort of what the latest information is, um, what members can do to be to get involved, and then we're going to go to your questions. We really want to focus on on questions tonight and give, and give members the opportunity to ask anything uh, that they may have. So if you want to ask a question, use the little chat feature on the right-hand side to uh, type your question to me, and we'll get to as many as we can on the call. So um, like I mentioned, last month's budget bill called for $900 million in savings from axing sick leave, even though we are still actively in negotiations on this very issue. Uh, more recently, in the past week or so, the Budget Implementation Act uh, proposes to give the government the power to override negotiations altogether and impose any deal they choose. So I want to bring Robin Benson into the conversation first. Robin, thanks again for joining us. What are your thoughts on the latest attacks on our members' rights, and how uh, will PSCC respond? Thanks so very much for asking me to be here. We all know that our sick leave is an insurance policy and uh, certainly is there for us to use uh, should we be ill. And when we leave uh, the Federal Public Service, then the uh, sick leave stays there. So, so Mr. Clement and I have had uh, many discussions uh, around it. So when coming back from uh, convention on Thursday, it was Thursday or Friday of last week, uh, they tabled the Budget Implementation Act, which is uh, Bill C-59, and it's been a whirlwind of press, and I'm hoping that some of it uh, filtered down into the prairies uh, it, with respect to us challenging the government, because that's certainly what we're doing. Uh, this this has gone further than just our sick leave, brothers and sisters. You, you have to appreciate that uh, while the government says that they want to uh, negotiate sick leave, and Mr. Clement is saying there's room to negotiate sick leave, We've been really clear that on one hand, um, uh, you know, we're certainly not going to go to work sick in order, on the other hand, to have uh, a full paycheck. So uh, because it doesn't matter what uh, what program they've uh, put in front of us, there still is an element of leave they'll pay, and we certainly uh, cannot afford that. So having said that, the BIA comes along, and uh, it's called Division 20, and I'll invite you to read uh, pages 147 on through to oh, practically maybe, I don't know, maybe 10 pages or so of it. Um, and I'd ask you to actually read that uh, May 19th for 19 minutes in your workplace because I think that uh, uh, if it was me, uh, I'd want to know what's in the Budget Implementation Act and, and more specifically uh, Division 20, which says sick leave and disability programs. Uh, and so what they've done is they've tabled this and now um, Mr. Clement and I are really uh, uh, exchanging words, if you will, because this, as I said, goes further than, than our sick leave. This goes against our Charter of Rights and Freedom. And so we have contained within the Charter the right uh, to have free collective bargaining. And so by this act, what they intend to do is pull out a portion of the collective agreement, uh, rip it up, if you will, and uh, impose a short-term disability program outside of our collective agreement. And we have very clearly, and have been saying for over a year now, that uh, we're certainly not going to, uh, going to accept that. We um, have had meetings with your national board of directors, your uh, uh, component presidents, your regional executive vice presidents. Today, I had a meeting with the uh, National Joint Council uh, union presidents, which is all of the other unions uh, uh, within the federal uh, public service. 
Um, we certainly have had meetings with negotiating teams. As I'm sure many of you know they came into town this week and they were going to go into negotiations. Uh, but how can you just go into negotiations uh, with an employer like this? We needed to take this week to reevaluate how we're proceeding, to look at what kind of actions we need to take, both uh, in terms of letting the employer know that we're unhappy and uh, legal challenges. So uh, we have a number of uh, events that we're going to be um, hosting over the next uh, uh, couple of months, certainly uh, May 19th, and I'm sure Marianne will speak to you about mobilization on the 19th. Uh, June 19th, during Public Service Week, I think that that's a, a, an incredibly appropriate week to uh, talk about uh, respect from your employer, to talk about um, the court challenges that lie ahead, and the Supreme Court over and over again have confirmed that we have those rights. So we believe that this legislation will be uh, passed by the end of June. They're not, uh, uh, they're not wasting any time and I just uh, read an interview with uh, Mr. Clement with the Ottawa Citizen where he uh, would like to have this all wrapped up before the election October 19th. Um, and certainly uh, he can, uh, he can uh, indicate he'd like to have it all wrapped up. But if it means uh, that our members have to choose between going to work sick and having a full paycheck, uh, then that's certainly not going to happen. So I think I've given you just a flavor of uh, what's been taking place lately uh, in the last two weeks since convention and certainly the determination of your negotiating teams uh, to ensure that uh, you're well represented, uh, your uh, leadership um, in terms of uh, the work that they're going to do and have done on your behalf and will continue to do right up until the next federal election when we will change the government. So Jeffrey, is there something else you wanted me to add? Uh, Robin, I think that was that's good for now. It's a good uh, opener. We'll now hear from Marianne to talk a bit about um, how members can get involved right now and you know what we're calling on members to do and then we'll go to some questions and and uh, hear from Marianne and Robin some more. Marianne? Great thanks Jeffrey and uh, thanks everyone for coming on the webinar it was um, well we had the topic scheduled uh, the nice thing about technology is that we can change the focus when we need to um, so I thank Robin for being available. Um, Robin had talked a little bit about uh, the the Bill C-59 that was just introduced and and you know over the course of April uh, and most of May I, I've been out in the region with bargaining team members doing bargaining updates and one of the things that we've been talking about is that you know, when the teams are sitting at the table with Treasury Board, when we were talking just about sick leave, you're negotiating with Treasury Board at the table. Um, by virtue of the government putting this in the budget and then Tony Clement going to the media saying that he's going to implement this, this has now become political and this, you know, as Robin said, this isn't a sick leave issue anymore. This is about a government who doesn't respect our right to free collective bargaining uh, and is going to try and bully and intimidate our members uh, into accepting something at the bargaining table. And um, so from the minute that it, that it was brought forward, um, at, at every level there was a commitment to say we'll fight this and do whatever we have to do. So um, Robin had mentioned, you know, there, there's different legal avenues and, um, you know, all of those are, are being prepared and will be filed, including a charter challenge, because this is against our, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And this is about your right to participate in a union and your right to elect someone to go to the table and negotiate for you. Um, and this is not something that um, we can just sit back and, and let go through. So, um, you know, Robin had mentioned uh, about reading out uh, Vision 20, uh, Bill C-59. Um, you know, there's all kinds of different things that, that are going to be coming out at the national level and the regional level. Um, but one of the main things that I want to talk about is, and Robin mentioned this, next week all of the members of Parliament are back home. That's the one week that they are back uh, in their home uh, ridings between now and when uh, the session ends in June. And you know what some MPs are saying is that they haven't heard from our members. 
Um, now, I'm not saying that's accurate information, uh, but that's what they're saying. They're saying that, well, no one told us they didn't like this. Um, so one of the most effective things that we can do is call your MP. And um, it's a really scary thing to do if you've never done it. Um, it, you know, it may take you out of your comfort zone, but sisters and brothers, this is the time. Uh, if, if this was, if there ever was a time, this is it. Because looking back, this is not law yet. Now, are the chances of, of um, convincing a majority conservative government to not proceed with this? Uh, what are the chances? But you know what? What were the chances that we would turn Alberta orange? Um, so we need to try. And if you honestly believe that the government is trying to bully us into something that that is our right to negotiate on, um, it's time to make that call. So members are, are um, calling their MPs, requesting appointments uh, for May 19th, which is June, July, August, September, October, which is five months away from the federal election. Uh, you know, so you can call, uh, whether they're in or not, if you can get an appointment to go in, they're people like everyone else. Um, and they need to hear, put the bill in front of them and say, what does this mean to you? And can you explain to me how in your mind this doesn't, uh, um, this doesn't take away from my rights under the charter? Because if they're voting on it and outright ask them how they plan on voting on this bill. Uh, and if they won't meet with you, then make sure and let us know. And if you meet with your MP, make sure and let your regional office know. I know in many areas, uh, some members are saying they're going to go stand out in front of their MP's office for 19 minutes on the 19th uh, or sometime that week. So, um, you know, get a few friends, take the dog for a walk. If you happen to stop in front of the MP's office and shucks darn you have a picket sign on, um, you know, but it's time to let them know that they are accountable to their constituents, um, not Tony Clement. Uh, not a political party. They are elected to represent you. So um, that's one of the main things. So May 19th, we've been asking members to do events on the 19th. Um, you know, Robin mentioned, um, take 19 minutes, stand up and read out loud Division 20 of, of Bill C-59. And, you know, it, it's clear when the legislation says, you know, the the basically these changes could go in effect by order made on the recommendation of the president of the treasury board which means any day that tony clement wants to pull the pin he can do that um, so make sure that members know we need to talk about it we need to talk about it in uh in the context that this is um th this can't be allowed to happen in silence um you know some of the area councils are looking at possibly um, uh, targeting some ridings where MPs have been extremely vocal about this. Uh, you know, if you're up to writing a letter to the editor to let people know uh, in your community that, um, you know, you find this offensive. And, and also National Public Service, we've had a boycott now. This will be the third year that uh, unanimous decision of the board uh, to boycott National Public Service Week activities. It's not personal to your manager if you happen to have a good manager, and I know they do exist, um, but all of these actions are reported up. And at, at this point, we need to make sure that the employer is reporting to the government that there's a strong movement, not just from the leadership of PSAC, but from the grassroots, from locals. Um, so this really is an opportunity uh, for those of you on uh, on the webinar to you know hear some of the information and we really just wanted to have an opportunity for people to ask questions so I think I'll stop there uh, and you know we can we can just spend the rest of the hour going to questions Jeffrey okay, great thanks Marianne so I'll just remind everyone to use the chat function on the side there to send me a private message with your questions um, if you have anything, any question about, uh, you know, what's been happening with the latest budget implementation bill and sick leave and all that, um, and what PSAC is doing, you can send me a, a question in the chat box and indicate if you want to ask it or if you want me to read it out. If your microphone doesn't work or you don't have one, and we'll go from there. 
So um, I've been getting a lot of questions so far. Uh, I guess I will start um, with this one from, from Mark. Um, Robin, this one is probably for you. Mark says, I certainly support our union's effort to push back and I believe we need to fight. We lost our severance and pension is next. So the effort and push is appreciated. My question is, should they legislate this, which they will, if we legally fight it, could some sort of injunction be put into place so we can stop the short-term disability from going forward or our hands tied? In other words, if they proceed and we challenge it, can it be stalled until a legal decision is rendered? So, Jeffrey and, and Mark, that's a really good question. Uh, just look at the uh, Alberta Union of Public Employees and the injunction that they were uh, able to get successfully. So, uh, I, I think I had said in my opening remarks, but uh, I'll certainly repeat again that um, we're going to use every legal avenue that there is. So, you know, injunctions, court challenges, unfair labor practices, you name it, uh, we're going to do it because uh, we certainly don't believe that this government has the right to uh, take something out of the collective agreement um, via uh, legislation. So, you know, certainly um, we will uh, we'll file the injunction. Um, and, and should this legislation come in, into place uh, before the election, then uh, so be it. Because if you read uh, Division 20 or Section 20, it calls for a four-year period because while they, they talk about a short-term disability program, they haven't been able to find a carrier yet. I mean, we're talking hundreds of thousands of, uh, of employees that uh, that they want to shirk their responsibility. Uh, to, uh, so, uh, you know, certainly uh, it speaks to a four-year window. And uh, I, I can uh, almost assuredly tell you that after October 19th, um, they won't be the government of the day. Jeffrey? Thanks, Robin. And actually, just stick around here because um, I have another question for you from from Chantel. So um, we know that all 18 federal unions took a, a solidarity pact before bargaining began uh, in terms of no concessions on sick leave. So Chantel's asking, uh, based on the meetings you've had this week, um, are the unions still standing united? Oh, definitely. Uh, you know, it, it was a really, really good uh, meeting today. Um, and as a matter of fact, we had a bit of a demonstration uh, this morning because the teams, uh, of course, as I said, were in, and we chose not to go to the table because we need to reevaluate, regroup, whatever you want to call it. Um, so we did a bit of a, a of a demo um, at Pierre Polyout's office. And so for us in the West, um, that's maybe not a household name, but it certainly is a, a household name here in uh, Ottawa. Uh, it's an individual who um, has done nothing uh, other than be a uh, politician um, and, a, and a lobbyist, I think. So uh, So long and short of it, uh, he's very interesting in uh, his remarks about public service workers. And so it seemed appropriate for us to uh, go to his uh, constituency office. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't there. Of course, he was probably in the House. But uh, suffice it to say, uh, we did a bit of a demonstration there. We uh, left him a copy of the um, uh, Charter of and freedoms just in case uh, 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 he didn't understand what it was and uh, so I think that um, uh, for us uh, the, and where I'm going with this is that uh, there were uh, several uh, presidents there from the other unions um, they spoke uh, gave uh, uh, you know greetings and and uh, solidarity pledges and then we went on to the meeting of the full National Joint Council and at that meeting we reaffirmed our commitment to each other uh, reaffirmed our commitment to our membership because that's the most important thing here is that uh, uh, we want to represent our members to the best of our ability and we want to make sure that uh, they don't have to go to work sick and uh, we're all in the same place at the same time so it, it was uh, a really exciting meeting today. Glad to hear that. Now we'll get to Marianne. I'll give you a break Robin. Uh, Marianne, I have a question here for you from um, Louise. So she wants to know, uh, what is the impact, what will the impact be of our visit to MP offices? So th there's a couple interesting things to this. Um, you know, I've met with uh, my MP and several of the MPs, primarily in, in Saskatoon when I was there. Um, and they honestly know, especially if you have backbenchers, uh, there's there's a few MPs that will tell you inside information uh, without knowing. 
So number one, that's that's one way of doing it, um, you know, to be able to get some information back. But the reality is that no member of parliament can know everything about everything. Um, you know, the legislation that's put in front of them. So a lot of times what's happening is they're reviewing legislation that someone else has told them is good. Um, they don't necessarily read it uh, with the, the lens of, of what does this mean, how does this impact my constituents. And, you know, they're, they're told, I mean, the reality is in this majority government, um, they're basically, they're told how to vote. Uh, because it's a conservative party line, it's not necessarily what's good for their constituents. So, um, sometimes it, it's interesting to watch an MP, to look them in the eye and have that conversation with them and make them accountable. And, you know, as much as we may think it doesn't make a difference, uh, or very often I'll hear, well, my MP is a conservative, so there's no point. My MP is a liberal, so there's no point. Um, the, the reality is um, if they have enough of that information, when they go into their back rooms, and I honestly believe because of the pressure that we've put on uh, MP since the whole sick leave debate has started, uh, you know, the pressure around bargaining, um, all of that has kept them from doing anything up to this point. Um, because there's cracks um, and not everyone agrees with stuff. So if we, can, if we can put enough doubt in their mind to let them know, number one, that the membership supports this, that everyone is on board, um, that, um, you know, we better be careful how we do this because they're not backing off. Um, they're going to call our bluff. Um, so I, I think that's why it's really important is to let them know so that they can't say nobody talk to me. Uh, and you know what? It's empowering for you. Uh, when you walk out of an MP's office after having a discussion and the reality is they may ask you a question you don't know the answer to, you just say, I don't know. I'll get back to you. And then you call our office and we help you with that. Um, because it's, it's a conversation. I'm concerned about this. How do you plan on voting? What are you doing? And they report that stuff up. And one visit to an MP office, they, they have numbers and I always get them mixed up, but it's something like for an actual office visit, they equate that to the equivalent of like a thousand constituents because not many people uh, actually take the time to book an appointment. So that must mean that you're, you're extremely serious about an issue. So, you know, try book an appointment. Uh, it will not only take away their argument that they don't know, but it'll make you feel um, empowered to continue and to go back and talk to your coworkers as well. Thanks, Marianne. And Robin, did you have anything to add to that to that question? I do, if you don't mind. Uh, just uh, some exciting uh, events happened today that um, even Marianne is, is not aware of, so it'll be news to her as well. Uh, the negotiating teams, uh, were uh, the members, were able to go to Parliament today for a question period. Um, many were there um, uh, through uh, the opposition uh, gallery, and uh, some were in, uh, I guess, what's called like the public gallery. So suffice it to say, they went there, and the uh, Liberals asked a question in the House, and uh, Mr. Clement was actually there, and then the NDP asked two questions. So there were questions and, and statements by both uh, Liberals and, uh, uh, and NDP. Uh, and it was all around uh, C-59 and keeping our sick leave and uh, treating us with uh, dignity and respect. And so um, we took the opportunity because, uh, you know, some of our, our team members uh, met with uh, Thomas Mulcair, uh, leader of the NDP, and some of our team members met with um, Roger Kuzner, who is the labor critic for the uh, Liberals. And at that time, we, you know, clearly asked uh, Mr. Kuzner, uh, were the Liberals uh, prepared to, uh, to keep our sick leave? Um, you know, or, or did they uh, still think it was a liability uh, the way that, uh, you know, they had been thinking about it a while back. And uh, today, uh, the Liberals uh, announced that they would be uh, basically intact uh, in the collective agreement. So they have come out and said that they are against um, uh, Bill C-59, uh, that uh, they feel that the uh, Conservatives should be negotiating uh, with us. Uh, but when, um, when asked further, uh, they said that they felt uh, that it should be uh, 
left uh, within our collective agreement. And of course, uh, you know, I shouldn't say of course, but I, all of you should know that the NDP have been supporting us uh, throughout this whole process. And uh, as a matter of fact, some of the members of Parliament have actually come out to some of the demonstrations that we've had uh, because they are very committed uh, to working people. So I just wanted to add that because it just happened today. Thanks, Jeffrey. Thanks, Robin. Um, so, I mean, Marianne, I'll, I'll go back to you because it sort of builds on what you were talking about with the MP here. Um, I've had a couple questions here. One from, um, where is that question? <laughs> a lot of questions going in right now. Uh, oh, here we go. One from Sylvie and uh, another one from Diane, both asking, how can we find other members in our ridings to go to MPs' offices with? So um, I think that the best thing to do, because, you know, we, we do have privacy issues, so, so we won't uh, give out uh, your names uh, to, to other members. We, we do respect the privacy. Um, what I would say is that um, we can easily, through the regional office, and I can, I can talk to the staff in the morning, uh, if you want to go but uh, you want other people with you, uh, maybe call the regional office, so Edmonton, uh, Calgary, Saskatoon, Regina, or Winnipeg, and all of the phone numbers uh, or emails are on the Prairie's website. Uh, if if you're looking and, and you're looking for some support or you want to get a group together to just, you know, even just stand outside um, for 19 minutes, you know, with a sign saying, you know, respect my collective agreement, um, you know, or whatever message you want. So call the regional office and uh, leave a phone number and an email address. And, um, you know, I know some of the area councils um, are already kind of making some phone calls and trying to see who they can gather. So. So that would be the best way to do that. And before you turn your webcam off here, I have a question from uh, B. Cantafio, um, first name just B. But um, they ask, will PSAC and other unions email bullet points to bring forward to MPs? And I know here at PSAC, we are working on some, some um, notes for members to take to MPs. Um, so you know, what's the best way for us to, to get those to members? Um, I think probably what the best thing is as we're working on it because I recognize that that um, you know sometimes even though it's it's best to talk from the heart you need that piece of paper with a few points on it right um, so so it's not you know we won't be doing a script or anything but but we'll give you some factual points that you can raise and then uh, just to kind of help frame you and give you that comfort. Um, so I think what we'll do is we will send that information out to your local president. Uh, so each of the regional offices has a contact list with your local executive. Um, rather than, I don't want to put it on the website because then it becomes public and, you know. Uh, so we'll send that out to the locals. If you haven't seen it um, or don't know who to contact, call the office and we'll make sure and let them know that if any members call for the information, we'll send it out to you. And, and that would be on a personal email. We won't be able to do that through a government email. Great. So Robin, I'm gonna to go to you next. I've had a couple questions about timelines. So Wendy asks, are we looking at no sick leave by the fall? And Greg asks, when is the earliest members could lose sick leave benefits? Do you have any idea on how quickly this could unroll? Sure, it's easy. They're not going to lose their sick leave benefits because we're going to have a new government uh, October 19th of this year. Um, and uh, suffice it to say, we have no intention of negotiating uh, lesser provisions than what's in the collective agreement right now. This government has not told us, it, even though we've asked repeatedly, what is wrong with the sick leave provisions that we currently have? Uh, give us the statistics. Tell us why you have this grandiose plan about a short-term disability program. And all we get is that they want to modernize it. Well, that's simply uh, conservative ideology. So quite frankly, we have no intention of giving up the sick leave. 
So, uh, as I said, uh, they don't even have a carrier in mind. Um, we we will uh, continue with the bargaining process. We'll be back at the table in June. Um, we have a number of issues that we need to uh, talk about. Uh, so, you know, we'll we'll negotiate on through the summer into the fall as as one would normally do so. And um, we we will change the government in October, and then um, we won't have to worry about this. So, um, in short, Jeffrey, we're not giving it up. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so, okay, brothers and sisters, in short, we're not giving it up. <laughs> good answer. Hold strong. So, yeah. another question for you, though, um, because we know Tony Clement has been um, making things up <laughs> in the media. <laughs> he's just recently talked about how he's been bargaining with us for 200 meetings. He's, you know, said that. Um, this needs modernization and all kinds of things. But he's also um, spouted the 900 million um, figure. And so uh, one member here is just wondering sort of if we know where that $900 million came from. Is is that how much sick leave costs? And, and if not, is there any sort of way that um, another person says, is there any plan to give a real uh, a real figure for how much this costs? So those are excellent questions because here's here's what I know today. Um, I was on Power and Politics uh, with uh, Evans Holman um, um, probably just last week. No, this week. I, I think it was this week. And anyway, I'm, I apologize and I'm not trying to be facetious, but the days are certainly uh, running together and, and uh, uh, the membership in the prairies uh, can appreciate uh, most of you know me, so you'll know we've been pretty busy. So long and short of it, uh, at the time, uh, it must have been um, uh, after the budget was uh, was presented over the 900 million. So it wasn't the Budget Implementation Act that for that power of politics. It was the one before for the budget proper, when Clement was talking about the 900 million dollars. And I, I, I said to Evan Solomon, "Will you ask him?" Because Nobody knows where he gets this $900 million from. And if you listen to the interviews that, he, that he's doing, he says, well, it's $900 million, and, but there's room to negotiate within that. So, like, really, what are you talking about? So, um, so that's number one. We don't know where he's getting his figures from. Uh, number two, the, the accounting practices or how you show liabilities all changed a couple of years ago. So, so they're, they're, they're showing this differently. They're showing it as a liability. Well, I mean, we all know if we're off for a few days with the flu, we don't get replaced. If we're off for a week, you know, with bronchitis, we don't get replaced. Um, if we're on, off for any fair length of time, of course we would get replaced. Or if we were a shift worker, you know, working at the border or working in a penitentiary, something like that, where, you, you know, you need to have somebody there. If you have a two-person port, then you need to have two people there. So, so that's where it costs some money, if you will. The parliamentary budget officer was really clear that if there's, there's no... Uh, um, a uh, sense of a liability the way that the government is making it out to be. Because if you look at the budget proper, on one page of the budget it talks about um, the liability and uh, it talks about booking the $900 million. And then you look at the budget uh, at another point where it talks about uh, people don't have enough sick leave. Two-thirds of the federal public service uh, don't have enough sick leave, don't have three weeks of sick leave. Well, then then is it only one-third that has like $900 million or more um, that, that they're carrying over? So really, the numbers are skewed because they're making them up. And every time we ask them where they're getting the numbers from, um, we get a different answer and we get a different, uh, a different, um, what do I want to call it, uh, uh, roundabout, if you will. I know that uh, the other day uh, when I did a, a radio, um, uh, live radio, they interviewed uh, Mr. Clement before me and he said something about, uh, you know, he's got no one to dance with. And I said, well, I'm not dancing to the same tune as he is, so no, I'm not dancing with him because he really is not... Um, he's not uh, truthful, I suppose, 
or the information that he's getting uh, to share, his speaking points, um, uh, don't uh, have uh, actual figures because there's been two parliamentary budget officer um, uh, uh, reports and uh, they both uh, they both say, A, we don't use the sick leave that he says we do, that we're, you know, we're in line with anybody else, and B, we're not the liability that he uh, makes us out to be. But, you know, there's a play for uh, him around his election uh, for his voter base. And, uh, you know, so for us, um, we just need to keep telling the truth um, and keep hammering that home. And, you know, his 200 days, um, he said that many times now, and he knows uh, some of the cases that he's interviewed before me and sometimes he's interviewed after me. They, they like to... Um, they like to have the two of us kind of together, I, I suppose, uh, so that we can argue with each other. Uh, I, I feel I win, but that's just my thoughts. But, uh, um, Jeffrey, we've had about five sessions. And so that's probably three, four days uh, each session for, for each of our teams. Now, granted, they, you know, they all come in together. So that's the PA, the SV, the EB, the TC, and the FB. So you have, uh, you know, all those teams coming in. But they only meet three to four days, uh, five sessions. So really, uh, unless he's counting everybody, because all of the National Joint Council Unions are in negotiations. So once again, you know, this is his way of, uh, of uh, doing the math. And, and we all saw how Prentice uh, did his math and, and what happened. So, you know, I, I can hardly wait to see what happens to Mr. Clement. That I, and I, I don't think I can add any more to that, Jeffrey. That's fine. That was a great answer, Robin. But I do think uh, Marianne wants to get on in this one. So Marianne, do you have something to add to that? Well, yeah, I just wanted to kind of add in, and Robin kind of mentioned it. And, and this is an example of little things that um, uh, what you might think is a little thing that members can do. Uh, so last week, um, you know, Tony Clement is great on Twitter. Um, so when C-59 was introduced and it was clear that, um, that they were planning on, on uh, bullying us and, and trying to impose this in our collective agreement, uh, some members took to Twitter and uh, several Prairies members uh, took to Twitter and, uh, you know, I got a message saying get in here. Um, and so in a matter of about half an hour, I don't know how many tweets there were, but it was about the number 200 because uh, Tony Clement is really good at pulling a number uh, out of the air, out of a hat, out of his you-know-what, whatever you want to call it, um, and not being able to back it up. And as soon as you challenge that, he shuts down, um, as does anyone in the government. So when he said, you know, we've had over 200 meetings, uh, you know, one of the responses was, uh, well, we've only met with you five times, so I know math is hard, uh, but that doesn't add up. So, and, you know, promptly within a few minutes, he had blocked a bunch of people from Twitter um, because that's how they do it. They'll talk to you when you listen, uh, when you agree with them, but as soon as you don't, he'll block them. And I think there's many Prairie members who have been blocked by, by uh, Tony Clement and other MPs, but that's one of those little actions where, you know, make them accountable for the stuff that they're putting out there. Um, somebody sent me a link today of a video and it was from Ottawa and the reporter said that sick leave rolls over to retirement. Um, so I watched the clip, he did say it, so I tweeted back to him and said you were wrong. Um, now is that going to appear anywhere? No, but we have to challenge this stuff. And so if they say that, send a letter to the editor saying you know what, I got 2,000 hours in my bank. Um, or you know, I, but we, we need to challenge that. But if you're looking for any logic in the numbers that they've thrown out around this, you're not going to find it. Even the, the parliamentary budget officer couldn't find them. So I just had to add because it, it, it was quite, um, um, having a Twitter fight with, with some of these politicians is actually quite amusing. Marianne, stick around though, um, because you, you, you mentioned something in your response that uh, an, a, a member has raised and I want to bring that to your attention. So. Um, you talked about, you know, members sharing that they have a, a certain amount of sick leave. And uh, Karen wrote me saying, um, I was offered the PeopleSoft printout of a recent retiree showing over 2,000 plus hours bank time. Um, and she's wondering sort of, you know, what can she do with this sort of information? Does National Office, Office want it or how can this sort of information be utilized? 
Um, yeah, you know what? Um, if they're willing to do that, I would block out the, um, um, you know, the, the, the last name and, and the PRI because that's private information. Um, but you know what? Send that send that into to our office, and um, you know I, I think it's something that we can be tweeting, we can be sending out to uh, members of parliament, and you know we if we can utilize that, we can put that out and say here's an example of someone who retired and this is what they left in their bank. So absolutely, if they're willing to share that, uh, please send it in to my office or Jeffrey, please. Perfect. So, um, just looking at some questions here now. We're getting a lot of questions. Um, so, Marianne, you talked about going to MPs' offices, lobbying, making your voice heard. But Samuel asks, what can members do at their workplaces to show the employer that we are not happy with this and that we are mobilizing ourselves? Perfect. And you know what? That's that's a perfect question. Um, what we're seeing more and more, um, as we've been doing multi-local bargaining update meetings, and I've been doing worksite visits, um, you know, it's really clear in a lot of workplaces that employers are are pushing back, and they're they're crossing that line, and they're you know, they're saying to our members, well, you can't put this on the bulletin board, and you can't do this, and you can't do that, and yeah, there are there are lines. I mean, and that was kind of the focus of our April webinar was about political rights in the workplace. Um, but just like Robin said um, on Power and Politics, and it was Tuesday, no, it was Monday, Robin, that you were on Power and Politics. Um, it just as as she had said on there, you know, we won the right for political rights 25 years ago. Um, so when you leave the workplace, you can put a sauna sign on your lawn. You can work for any candidate of your choice. But in the workplace, you know, there, we have to start pushing back because. If you want to stand up on, on May 19th and all go into the coffee room and and read out Division 20 of C-59, um, you have every right to do so. Just like you can talk about what happened at your kid's hockey game, uh, what happened on you know uh, American Idol last night. Um, so the employer tries to, to stifle that conversation, and that's your right. Um, so, you know, hand out copies of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. That's one idea I heard. How can an employer tell you uh, that you can't distribute the Canadian Charter? You know, circle the section that gives us freedom of association. Um, read that out. Uh, you can do a lunch and learn. You can um, go for a walk around the block with, uh, with a flag or with a sign. Um, or just let people know that you're doing it in support of bargaining. Um, and most importantly, you need to talk to each other. Um, so we have 21,000 members in this region. Not all who are Treasury Board, to be clear, this uh, Budget Implementation Act only covers Treasury Board proper employees right now. Right now. Um, but we know whatever happens there is going to trickle down or trickle up, whichever way you want to look at it, to everyone. So we need to talk to people and, and really understand what's at stake here. Um, and actually, I'll mention um, on the Prairie's website, there is a new video that we just put up uh, recently. And it's some members in, in the Prairie's in Lethbridge uh, who have the misfortune of currently um, battling cancer and they wanted to tell their story and they wanted to share it with members so you know what go into a boardroom take your laptop take your phone sit down and everybody watch the video for 10 minutes um, and talk to people who think that sick leave is not an issue because they've never needed it um, and then talk to them about the bigger picture about the fact that somebody negotiated this so conversation talk 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 uh, and October 19th, vote. Um, you know, we'll be working into strategies for the federal election uh, coming down to it, but we need to start getting people engaged however they want to vote. Never even tell you who to vote for, uh, but ask the questions because candidates are coming to the doors now. So those are some of the things you can do. Thanks, Marianne. And I just sent a link to everyone on the call right now to that video that Marianne referenced. Um, and I'm going to send a couple other links as well. Someone had asked me to send a link for uh, Bill C-59. 
So I'll send that and some other things that we've referenced. And then all of this will be posted on the website as well. So you can find those links uh, later this week on the Prairies website, which is psac.com slash prairies. Now I want to go back to Robin for a question. So um, Robin, a couple weeks ago at the uh, National Triennial Convention of the PSAC, um, the delegates passed an emergency resolution unanimously for a $5 million campaign. So I have one question here from uh, Greg. Where did that question go? <laughs> here we go. Greg says, what specifically are we using the 5 million emergency resolution funds for? And then a question from Kathy, which I think sort of goes well with it is, I think it's important to gain public support and want to know if there's a plan to present or release information to the general public. Okay, um, thank you very much. So, but let's be clear, because uh, it's not a $5 million campaign. It's up to $5 million. Um, the resolution itself, uh, and if I might, I'm just going to read a bit. I won't read the whole thing, but I'll just paraphrase, uh, that we condemn the Conservative government for undermining the collective bargaining process. Uh, we stand up and oppose any government actions that uh, compromise any of the members' rights. Uh, that we will continue to organize and mobilize our members through concerted and strategic actions uh, to defend our rights. We'll take necessary, necessary legal action to defend our constitutional rights, and you know that was before the BIA, so it, it makes it even more appropriate now. Uh, that we will work to elect a federal government that respects worker and union rights and uh, will not let this government or any future government intimidate us or take, a, uh, um, take away our rights and that we'll use up to $5 million uh, uh, to coordinate a strategic campaign. So the National Board of Directors met and uh, they had quite a discussion uh, about this because it was uh, um, a resolution that was presented on the floor. Um, and at that time we talked about a leadership tour. So the leaders are going to be going across the country talking to our membership. Uh, we talked about uh, doing a uh, pledge card, uh, like a, a, a petition, if you will, so that um, we could uh, ensure that we're talking to our membership and let them know that, uh, um, get them to sign up on it because then um, we'll probably present it to um, Mr. Clement. Uh, we talked about, uh, you know, lobbying the MPs. We talked about uh, the public service week. Uh, we talked about an advertising campaign because our, our members are continuously saying that they want to see the PSAC in the news, in, on TV or the radio. Um, so we'll, we'll be very strategic about how we do it because, uh, as I've said uh, over and over again, we've been very much a part of uh, the Canadian Labour Congress's uh, campaign and uh, their commercials uh, um, and bus ads, etc. So we will be doing a lot of that work between now and October 19th. But we're very cognizant that we have up to $5 million and it's not just that you're, we're going to go out and spend $5 million. We're going to be really careful how we do it and um, ensure that uh, we use that money wisely because we're very cognizant of the fact that it's uh, members' dues and we want to ensure that members benefit from it. And by that I mean that they've had the opportunity to have discussions, have dialogues, uh, know what it is uh, uh, with respect to their rights because, you know, in as much as what some of the questions have been, uh, you know, if, if we lose the sick leave or, or what will we do and when will we lose it, um, you know, it's, it's not finished yet, brothers and sisters. By any sense of the imagination, uh, this fight is not over. Just because they've tabled a C-59, just because there's this Division 20 contained within it, it doesn't mean that we're done. I mean, we've been fighters all along. I've been a union member for 35 years, and for me, I think that uh, it's a uh, uh, um, uh, it's just another battle that we have, and it's another fight that uh, we need to take to uh, defend to defend our rights. Um, this isn't a done deal. I mean, why would we let? This government bully us. I mean, if we think back to the mid 90s and the conservatives, and, and then after that election, where only two of them were left, my God, I think we can do it again. And I think that, you know, quite frankly, the, the public's on our side right now. I, I, I truly believe that the Canadian public um, are really fair. 
and and we're, we're we're part of that Canadian public. When I, I did a radio show the other day, and they said, well, you know about uh, uh, Canadians, and I said, well, cripes, we're out there coaching hockey. We're you know taking our kids to dance class. You know we're doing this with our grandchildren. We're grocery shopping at this corner store. We are in your communities. We're we're taxpayers as well. So we need to start talking to our friends and our families and our neighbors. Be proud of the work that we do and let them know that we're public service workers and we're there for them and that we're not about to let this government bully us and we're not about to succumb to pressure. So I mean, is 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 it a battle? Of course, it's a battle. Is it the first one we've had? No, nope. it's going to be the last. Probably not. So, but this is one that we're going to win, and and I truly believe in my heart of hearts uh, that we're going to win this, and we'll do it uh, with the help of each and every member, not just PSAC members, uh, but all members of the federal public uh, service unions um, and uh, the other unions as well that uh, belong to the Canadian Labour Congress. Thanks, Thanks Jeffrey. Robert. Well, hold on a second before you run here. I think you mentioned it earlier in your opening remarks, but uh, maybe just touch on it again, because I have a question here from Brenda. She says, would it be effective to have a generic letter with the facts, questions, um, employees' signatures to send to the MP's office? And I know that we are working on a, um, a petition right now, right? And we'll be releasing our petition. Can you talk a bit about that? So the petition, the petition, uh, in and of itself is to make sure that we talk to our members. Uh, you know, uh, we started our campaign, we're all infected, probably a year or two ago. Um, we hit about, uh, well, I hope that we talked to every single one of our members, but we got about 40,000 uh, flashcards here in uh, Ottawa. Um, and so, so I know that that one-on-one -on -one conversation is taking place. Um, I also know that we need to talk to our MPs or send letters to our MPs, emails. I'm getting a lot of uh, emails now uh, of copies of emails that our members are sending to their MPs. Um, the problem with form letters and what I'm, I'm told is that when the MPs receive a form letter, uh, they sort of put it to the bottom of the pile because even a four-line four letter in your own handwriting, they have to respond to because, um, you know, gone are the days uh, where we did the form letters, I, I think back to the uh, pay equity uh, um, battle, uh, and that was another one, 15 years, 32 years for for uh, Canada Post, and we won those battles. Uh, but uh, but I think back to the invoices, and we had thousands and thousands of invoices, and uh, we faxed them. And when you know that one fax line quit, and we had another fax number, and so you know um, that, that plugged up the uh, uh, fax machines for sure. But now with today's technology, it takes but a minute to send an email. Um, and so I, I suppose if we were to give you the text and you wanted to cut and paste, uh, that would certainly work. Um, but a handwritten um, uh, letter, you know, really does work. It's a personal touch, and uh, postage is free. It keeps uh, your your uh, brothers and sisters in CUPW, um, you know, working because uh, they have to deliver the mail. And uh, I, I think that uh, it's it's important. So we can give you some hints in terms of what you should put in a letter or how you want to word it, um, but it just takes. Uh, you know, just a very few minutes to drop a note to your MP to let them know that you're, you're disappointed. You're disappointed that uh, your collective bargaining rights are contained within the Budget Implementation Act, that your uh, the you know charter rights are being infringed on, and that uh, this government has absolute disdain for their employees, our members. Perfect. Thanks, Robin. Marianne, I'm going to go back to you for uh, a minute here because. Earlier, you were talking about uh, members engaging on social media and uh, the little Twitter battle between Tony Clement, one of many that we've seen uh, the other week. But this member asks uh, a question from Chantel. She says, as a member, can we use social media to share articles and information speaking against the gov conservative government without recourse? We held a, a webinar last month addressing this very subject. Can you sort of share what was discussed on that webinar? Yeah, um, so of course social media is is out in the public, right? Um, so the one thing that was suggested uh, from, uh, it was Edith Bramwell who is uh, the coordinator of our representation section, is that, um, you know, it is public information, even though you put privacy settings on, sometimes that stuff gets out. It really is best in your, when you're identifying yourself on social media, 
not to put your department um, or not to make comments about where you work. Um, so, you know, I, I wouldn't go on and say, well, I'm a CFIA inspector and, you know, CFIA inspectors suck or the agency sucks or, or there's a problem, right? So, you know, don't identify necessarily your department because when you're on social media, if you're making those comments, make them as as a citizen, make them as a Canadian uh, and don't uh, target it back. So if you have identified uh, in your profile for Twitter or or Facebook that you work for a certain department, um, you know that it, it would be best to take that down um, and you know you can you can make comments as long as you're not basically saying and I know this because um, uh, I work there. My, my personal um, kind of measure when I'm doing stuff, although um, now as elected officer, it's a, I can be a little more free with my comments. Um, but my my kind of um, the lens that I put on stuff is, am I putting out information that any member of the public could get, even if they a tipped it? Um, so if if a Canadian files an access to information and they would receive this information. Uh, then, you know, that, that kind of, it, it's basically available to anyone. Uh, if it's stuff that no one would know that's internal information, then you want to be really cautious. And, you know, one thing I'll, I'll mention on that as well, because I, somebody just asked me this um, yesterday, you know, if we're doing a rally or you're at another community rally uh, or you're out in the public, uh, a lot of times reporters will come up and, and put a microphone in your face and say, you know, you're here at this rally, you know, where do you work? And you get that moment of panic, um, and it's happened to me as I'm sure it happens, you know, to a lot. Just say no comment. Uh, if it's a PSAC sponsored event uh, and the media is invited, we'll have someone uh, identified as a speaker and they'll have notes and they'll know uh, what our message is because too often reporters can and that's their job, they're, they're good at their job, um, we'll, we'll try to get you to say something and they'll, they'll you know, so y you might tend to give up more information than you would uh, had you had time to think about it. So, you know, kind of kind of watch what you're doing. Um, and the, the webinar that we did around political rights is posted to the Prairie's website. So you can go back and listen to it and um, you can also um, share it on social media if you want to Sure. Perfect. Thanks, Marianne. So I just want to make an announcement that it is eight o'clock and this, this webinar was scheduled for, um, for one hour. So we have got a lot of questions. We're going to get to two more questions and then we're going to wrap up. Um, so, you know, if you can, if you can stay with us for another, uh, you know, 10 minutes or so, we'll get through two more questions and then unfortunately we'll have to wrap up. Um, so, Robin, I want to go back to you on this question here, um, and here we go. Considering the government uh, took sick leave out of the equation um, with the with this Bill C-59, what will the bargaining process look like going forward? Will the unions keep meeting with Treasury Board and negotiate? So I know that the teams uh, stepped away from negotiating this week. Do you want to talk about sort of why they did that and, and what this, what that process is going to look like going forward now? Okay, um, thanks, Jeffrey. You know, certainly we're going to negotiate. Uh, um, we did postpone the negotiations for this week. I think what we needed to uh, take an opportunity to uh, look at where we've been, look at where we're going to be going, um, look at what type of mobilization, what kind of actions we'd be asking from our membership, uh, how we would be talking to our, our members in terms of ensuring that uh, their rights are defended, that they stand up uh, to defend their own rights. Uh, you you know, and and you know, it turned out really well this week. The, the negotiating teams uh, got to uh, go to Parliament. They got to uh, meet with both the Liberals and the NDP. Uh, I'm sure that they tried to have discussions with the the Conservatives, but that hasn't uh, been reported back to me. But certainly, you know, when when you, you're you're in the House, you have an opportunity to talk to folks. So uh, I think that in and of itself uh, was great. Um, now the teams also looked at uh, what demands they have left and how they're going to move forward. And uh, we're going to be back at the table in June. We still have a lot of demand for these. Let's be really clear here. 
we uh, sent out our input call, you know, quite a long time ago. We asked for, uh, uh, you know, demands from the locals. We went through the process with a uh, national bargaining conference, electing the teams, etc. So for us, I think it's really important that um, uh, we we uh, uh, keep um, doing our, our negotiations. Um, and we we um, continue to uh, uh, go back and forth. I mean, we've got demands at the table, workplace issues that need to be looked at. So we're heading back there in June. It's it's our responsibility and our right uh, to free collective bargaining. Robin, another question for you here, which I, I think um, a lot of members have been asking here in the prairies. Um, Angela asks, will we end up striking? Robin, are you still there? I'm, so, I'm sorry. Yeah, can you repeat that, please? Oh, perfect. Yeah. So Angela asks, um, will we end up striking? We're nowhere near a strike right now. I, I know, Jeffrey, you have a, a flow chart that you could share with um, with the, the prairie members, but there's a number of steps. That, ah, there we go. There's another number of steps that we have to take before we would be in a legal strike position. We need to uh, go into mediation. We need to go to the public interest um, uh, commission. They We need to make presentations there. They need to write a report. Um, you know, there needs to be a cooling off system uh, in place, you know, in a number of days. So for us, uh, after the, the, the PIC, we call it the Public Interest Commission, um, that's where we would look at uh, uh, after the report um, is, um, is released, then we would look at whether or not we would be going out on strike. You have to remember that now with the changes, and I think it was under the Modernization Act where they made some of these changes, um, that our strike vote is only good for 60 days. So we would take it at an appropriate time when we were going to use it. So at this point in time, I'm not uh, I'm not too worried about a strike. I'm I'm more concerned about us standing up, us telling the MPs that. Uh, we're not uh, we're not going to take it, and that uh, they shouldn't be voting for this, and that they should come to the table uh, freely to negotiate with us in good faith, without predetermining the outcome, which is what they're trying to do now, and that we'll we'll progress and and do the negotiations that we need to do. Okay, thank you, Robin. Um, now. It's 8.10. Right We're unfortunately going to have to wrap up. So thank you. I know we have tons of questions here. Thank you so much for for your time, Robin. Um, Marianne, I want to throw it back to, to you to close things off and for your final thoughts um, uh, on tonight's webinar and, and just this issue in general. Any Anything else you want to add that we haven't discussed? Yeah. Um, so I, I'm just taking a quick look at some of the questions and um, so you may or may not hear your, your question in some of this. Um, you know, have we been monitoring public opinion? Well, a poll is only as, as you know, today is only as good as the people that were called. Um, but but we, are, we are looking at public opinion and I honestly do believe that the public is starting to realize um, that um, some of the stuff that this government is putting out and, you know, Overall, I think the thinking is that this budget didn't do for Canadians what they were expecting it to do. So uh, talking about the cuts, uh, we are getting public uh, opinion on our side on that. What works even better is when you talk to your neighbours and say, you know, um, when you hear on the news about those lazy public servants, remember that they're talking about me, uh, which will often change the public's mind. Um, we... Um, 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 uh, can we go to the Supreme Court to fight our rights? Absolutely. Um, you know, we already have a charter challenge in on the essential services. Uh, and as Robin said, uh, they're preparing all of the legal cases we can right up to injunction. Uh, and we'll let you know. Uh, if you make an appointment with your MP, do you have to tell them what you have to talk about? Um, they'll ask you, but the most important thing to say uh, you can say, I am a constituent. I vote in this writing. I am one of his or her constituents, and I want to talk to them about something the government introduced. I want to know how they're going to vote, what their position is. Uh, if they don't meet with you, won't talk to you, uh, please let the regional office know uh, so that we can, we can do that. Um, I think... So, you know, at the end of the day, here's what it comes down to, folks. 
um, there's a lot of things that that we can do, um, but there's a lot of a lot of things that members can do. So right from all levels of leadership that we have right now, um, there's a lot of work that's being done. But the most effective thing is the grassroots things, the the impromptu uh, Twitter fights, the the impromptu uh, demos in front of an MP office, talking to your neighbors, talking to your coworkers. Uh, making sure that you stay current on on bargaining information. You know the teams will be going back in June. Uh, we've we've done uh, just concluded a whole round of multi-local bargaining meetings. Um, but if team members can't come to one of your meetings, if you're having an AGM, we can try get someone to call in. We need to talk about this process. Um, but right now the time is. Uh, our fight now is with the government, um, and so we need to be selective in uh, in, in our messaging, uh, and we need to let them know that we're not backing down. And and I thank you, Robin, for coming on because I've heard you say it many times, uh, but we now have it on tape of the national president saying we're not giving up sick leave. Uh, it's it's not it's. I mean, I, I keep hearing you say it, um, but we, we have you recorded. So, uh, you know, when members question, um, you know, at thinking that we're going to falter, not only are we not giving it up, but none of the other unions are. So um, I also got a text from one of the team members who was in the House of Commons today who uh, 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 apparently Tony Clement said that 47 meetings have been canceled this week. Uh, by unions who don't want to talk to them today. Um, so there's a lot of work being done. Call your regional office, contact your area council. Uh, you know, if you want to do a session on how to lobby, on on you know, you need some help, you need some assistance. Um, by all means, call our regional office. So thank you all for your time. Oh, can I get a last word in? Well, I guess you're the president, so I guess we'll <laughs> let you have the last word. I'm sorry, I clicked and you from the query, so we'll let you. Okay. Oh, thanks. Thanks much. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that, except that this is like so exciting. I have to say, this is the first time that I, I uh, uh, really do a webinar. Um, uh, you know, we've done all those telephone town halls, and you know, you're kind of talking to the void. This this way, at least, was I, I can see Marianne. So this has been great fun. I, I really appreciate it. And and you're right. You've got me on tape. And what you've got, you know, on tape is that, okay, folks. Um, we're still fighting. We we are going to defend our rights. Uh, we, this isn't a done deal because you know this government isn't going to take away from you. They're not going to make you go to work sick um, in order to have a full paycheck. There is absolutely no way that the PSAC is going to negotiate uh, anything less than what you have contained in your collective agreement. If they want to give us more than what's in the collective agreement, if they want to, uh, if if they want to enhance what's in the collective agreement, uh, we'll certainly take that. I um. In one of my, um, uh, I call them snits, and since I'm talking to the prairies, they know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, in one of my discussions uh, with some some managers, uh, you know, like the upper echelon, she's they're like, well, what is it that you want? And I said, well, hey, why don't you give us what you've got, which is wage replacement all the way up until you should need to have a long-term disability. Um, after they had apoplexy and almost choked, um, because that's what the MPs have. They don't, you know, have to account for any sick days or anything. Um, but where I'm going with the sisters and brothers is that, you know, certainly um, you have contained in your collective agreement uh, sick leave provisions. Those provisions uh, are there for you as an insurance policy should you need to use them. You also have contained in your collective agreement uh, the wherewithal how these uh, sick leave provisions are managed. And that's, the, that's management's job and that's why they get their bonuses. And so we're not prepared to um, we're not prepared to uh, uh, have a third party uh, look after us. You know, um, uh, if we're away sick, uh, we, we want to talk to our supervisor. That, that's who we believe uh, cares about us in the workplace. So the long and short of it, it's a battle. It's a war. I don't know what you want to call it, but uh, we're going to win it. And we will win it with each and every one of you standing up to be counted. I think Marianne's giving you some 
great ideas to do on the uh, 19th of May and the 19th of June. And um, I'll come to the prairies anytime you invite me. Well, sorry, Marianne, but I will. <laughs> and so, if you uh, if you want uh, if you want Marianne and I to tour around your workplaces, you just send uh, Marianne an email, and we'll make it happen. And the deadly duo will come to your workplace, <laughs> coming to a workplace near you. So I, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for giving me this opportunity. It's been great fun. Thanks so very very much. All right. Thanks, Robin. Bye. Thanks, Marianne. And. Uh, a reminder for everyone who's participating, when this call ends, you'll have an opportunity to take a survey. We encourage you to give us your feedback. I've also had a couple of questions about the presentation. We will post, uh, this presentation was, uh, this webinar was recorded. We'll post that on the Prairies website, which is prairies.psac.com um, or psac.com slash prairies, either of those work. Um, so we'll post this, a link to this uh, video as well as the slides on the Prairie's website. I'll post all the links that we've discussed on the call on the website. And uh, we encourage you to share this information with your colleagues. Thank you again and have a good night.